Hi, this is Paul Bailoff from Exodus, and I'm doing an anti-drug, anti-alcohol warning. These things are really, really bad for you. The alcohol, it'll change the way you think. It'll make you think things that are good or bad and vice versa. And the pot's just unreality. Never, ever do these things. It's really, really bad for you. Like fog on stage. All right, this band coming up. Got the best drummer in the world, Gene Hoagland. What's up, buddy? You should know them. If you don't, you should sell this tape to somebody who does. Dark Angel. If you're given the chance to take a young mind, a ball of clay, twist and distort it into whatever you want, wouldn't you want that? You know, if, if you can... There's a bit of Dr. Frankenstein in every man. Everybody... A, a vast majority of people, I'm sure, would like to be able to take someone else, something else, create it in their image. Create it in to make the, the perfect build the perfect beast, you know, and you can do that with children. When I was a kid, I tried to stay away from that. You know, I, I stay, I've never done drugs. I don't really know what it's like. Um, that's never been my scene. You know, I think a lot of that might have come from my parents, you know, because my dad, when I was a kid, gave me the option. You know, he, he never said, don't do drugs. If I catch you doing drugs, I'll kill you. He just said, it's, it's a waste. Don't, don't involve yourself in it. His opinion became my opinion. So now, my girlfriend with her 18-month-old child, when can my opinion start becoming his? When can I start molding his, his ball of clay that is his mind? That's something to think about with all, with all children. Well, I know what works with me might work with a lot of other people. You allow your kid the choice, and he feels good about himself, you know, or herself. If you, if, you, if you force your opinions on your kids or on children, naturally they're going to rebel. You know, if you if they tell you what not to do, you're going to want to do it. You know, but if if you open their minds, I think that's kind of the way to go. Any, any interesting road stories? God, I could start getting naming off categories of urine bombs or piss bombs or sick sexual degeneracy or one time when I took this naked woman and burned all her pubic hair off when she passed out. But uh, that was that was pretty good. <laughs> don't don't pass out naked around Dark Angel, you know. And, uh, but um. Well. I'd, I'd gone into this hotel room where our merchandise, merchandiser was staying and he'd picked up this real, this real sick pig from Florida. I hope this goes to Florida because she was a real sick pig. I think I heard about she was gross. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, she just passed, he did her on the bed while we all sat there and like watched and then she passed out and he was looking at me like, Gene, take a turn man, take a turn. It's like, no, no. And then I saw on the nightstand there was some uh, a book of matches. I thought, well, I'm gonna have some fun with this woman. So I burned every single match one by one, just in her patch. And you know what happens when you like you burn your arm? It just singes and then it turns into this little knot. 
I'm sure this woman had no idea what the hell happened to her while she passed out because her entire patch down there had turned into this one. It was like this big before, and now it was like close to the skin and real gross feeling the next morning. And A lot more stories I couldn't tell you, but those would be kind of gross. Oh no, tell us. No, I can't do that. <laughs> they, they involve coprophilia of some sort, but uh, anyway, I don't know. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, did you know that you could put a light bulb, the, the big end of a light bulb, in a woman's vagina? You can do that. I, I, I didn't know that. But. Well, it's not every woman's vagina, but there are, there's at least one woman out there who's Vagina, you could put the big, big Have you seen it done before? Or? Done it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It, how could you say we're not sexist? You know, but sex, sexist things happen on the road. If there's a pig there that wants to be just tormented and, and used, then we're the guys to do it. I guess you know. <laughs> Just setting up a little. Uh, is this normal? This, this is going to become when this is complete. This will be what we call a temple. It's going to be consecrated. I'll consecrate the room using oils, fragrances, and incenses, and uh, we'll bless the room as well. And when that happens, whoever comes in has to ask to enter the temple. You don't just walk in a temple. So, as Reverend, this is your sermon, pretty much, right? Your your ritual. This this represents the moon goddess right here and this is, that's the female you could for all practical purposes you could have a uh, a pocket pussy or something really gross that represents a cunt <laughs> and for the male David tell me about uh, what got you interested in music um, in the early days what what finally what was, what was the thing that got you interested I in think music? it was basically the uh, the choir master having anal sex with me at a young age <laughs> into the whole music genre. <laughs> what was the idea of the, the, the naked thing? Is that kind of a ritualistic thing? The naked thing? thing is, I don't know, it started with, uh, it started out kind of harmless just as a joke with Metal Church. And then I, I, just, I was reading up on some uh, occult things, witchcraft and whatnot. I found out a lot of the witches did their uh, rituals and had black, held black mass in what they called skyclad. And skyclad is just another term for being naked. So, uh, both Metal Church records, I did one song a piece, uh, naked, and uh, now it's, it's it's kind of a tradition with Reverend that at least one or two now are saying. Not that it helps or anything; it's just a fun thing to do. Just I guess you could call it goofing off, or you could call it magic.